We are live now. Yep. Hello, everybody. Checkity check one two. Checkity check. I'm not seeing the check line. one two check. There we are. We're live. Ah, check one two check check. Go ahead and hit your uh, mic for me. <clears throat> Hello, test one two. All right, check that's perfect in my ears. Two. Hang on one second. Uh, or did you just gain him up? I think I just shared I this. He was one, but he's two. Mike, two. Okay. I'm probably going to have you turn my ears down a little bit overall. Not voice, but ears, yeah. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> check, 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 check. One, two, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Uh, I'm not hearing a whole lot of difference. Check, check, check. There it goes. That's, that sounds about right. Yes, thank you. What was I doing? Oh, Facebook. That's what I'm doing. I'm away for a few, me few weeks, and I don't know what's going on anymore. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was gonna say, I just ask you where you've been. <coughs> I'm uh, checking to check one, two. <coughs> microphone oh, check, mic check, mic check. On. Search, smoking and toasting. Smoking and toasting. <laughs> I, have, I have a new phone, so I have to type everything in at least the first time. Right. Smoking and toasting. It doesn't recognize your. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't recognize your uh, your stuff. There we go. Turn the volume down. And you got your cigar tasting notes, sir? I do. I'll have to pull them up, but yeah, I have them. And share. There we go. All right. <laughs> if you're ready, I'm ready. I am, uh, how do you say, tracking like a geo? <laughs> <laughs> like... Like a G6. <laughs> <coughs> awesome. Right. Who's, was it over somebody's phone volume up or did you kill it? Okay. I killed mine too. Ready when you are, gentlemen. Let's do this bad boy. Well, <laughs> welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this fine radio program. It is Schmokin' and Toastin'. It's show Schmokin? number 73. It's the show that's all about craft beer, fine spirits, and hand roll. Ian's back! I'm Yay! here! Wait, wait. We need, like, fanfare, and we need clapping. And yes, we need, please. Yeah, and which one's the fanfare? No, that's drum roll. Just keep hitting them. I don't mind. We can, we can use all of this. Ooh, oh, like that there, there we go. That's a good one. That's a good one. Maybe it's this one. No, that's not it. So, um, <laughs> okay, well, we'll figure it out. That's all close right, enough. There we go. That works for us. Welcome <laughs> in to show number 73. It is, first of all, I missed you. Like, like I miss hanging out with you. I miss, like, being in the studio, doing the show with you. And it is a great pleasure to have you back. Now, don't get me wrong. We had some great guests while you were gone. I actually watched the show. But it is, it is not the same without you, my friend. So I'm so excited that you're here. Yes. Well... I had to take a little bit of time. I had to catch up on some guitar work, some uh, building work, and things. Because you been... actually do other things for a living besides this show. <sighs> Only until we get enough sponsors. Okay, well, there we go. I'm talking sponsors? to you people out there. <laughs> Only until we get enough sponsors. Um, oh, well. So, yeah, I had a lot of work uh, backlogged in my workshop that I had to keep up with. So, that was uh, a good opportunity to catch up on that. And also, I felt like basically you're holding me back, and I figured you needed to be, you know, let needed, loose a little needed, bit on your own. Oh, you! I thought maybe you thought I needed to be humbled. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was maybe that was the play, huh? Yeah. No, actually, I'm only you know I'm only doing this show until the moment I realize that you're holding me back, and then I start my own show. Then you show your own show, which yes. will also which will just be called. That's not how you do it. <laughs> and that that'll be a show where I go across the world to to various exotic places, and when I find people in the middle of doing whatever they're doing, I will look at them and say in their native language because I'll learn this. I'll right. say. That's not how I do it. See, that's that's a show. Right. You should pitch that. That is a show. <laughs> that is an absolute show. Look, that was that was actually a, an original idea from a spinoff. Uh, me and a friend of mine decided at one point in time we we're going to do show, a show called The Joy of Cooking Drunk. Yeah, I love that. And idea then the spinoff yeah. was going to be That's Not How I that's Do It. That's not how you do it. 
<laughs> well, we, Speaking of that's not how I do it, actually. Yeah, your, your chair just, uh, chair just, just reduced itself. Yeah, uh, I do want to say a big, huge special thank you to our special guests and guest hosts over the last couple of weeks who, you know, we would not have had a show without them because it had just been me sitting here drinking beer and being sad. And that wouldn't have been a show, really. <laughs> It just wouldn't have been a show. So, <laughs> you know, that's, I've seen some podcasts that are actually yeah, like that. Yeah, well, yeah, and uh, I don't think they do all that well either. So, <laughs> a big, huge mondo thanks to Steve Robinson and Maria Todd, who were here for last week's show, number 72. Those for, guys are so fun. For the Light Beer uh, Blind Taste Test 2.0. Uh, they were a blast. If you haven't heard the show, go listen to it. They're, they're totally worth it. Uh, and then the week before that, we had uh, Trey Boring from Cigar Rights of America and my good friend. Uh, and and uh, business partner Pat Fant set in, and uh, Pat, of course, is always a blast. And Trey Boring was great. I mean, he was not boring at all. I know it's a bad pun, but he was uh, he was very informative about cigars and about what we uh, can do to preserve our right, to fight for our right to smoke cigars. And, uh, and so that's a good show to go back and listen to. And then the first show we did without you, I had uh, I had Chris uh, come in, Chris Hart, uh, from the Houston Bourbon Society and the Houston Whiskey Social. And, of course, he's always a lot of fun, and uh, he brought lots of whiskey. He always uh, brings the best drinks. I'm sorry I missed does, that. man. He really I'm does. so sorry I missed no, that. No, I knew. It was first week on, I was like, man, if Ian's watching this show, he's going to be like, Really bummed because he brought. Some I, I was stuff. and I was. He, he bought some really good stuff. So, but it is a thrill to have you back, my friend. It's show number seventy three. You are back, and we're going to give you a list uh, that we have uh, discovered of the best cigar lounges in the world. In the world. In the world. Nice. Yes. So this will be a lot of fun. We'll uh, put them on. I have actually. I, I've looked at the list already. I've actually been to two of them. So I'm ah. very excited to have two of the nine. It's a list of nine, and I've been to two of the nine. So I've only got seven to go, so I better start working on those frequent flyer miles. I uh, haven't heard the list yet, but I'm thinking bucket list now. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, well, road trip, show road trip. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you think, my friend. Uh, we'll be doing some great tastings today. We're going to be tasting St. Arnold's new beer. It's been out for a month or so, but it's the St. Arnold White Noise. It's a wit beer. Uh, we'll be tasting that. Cigar City Brewing's High Live. IPA uh, from Tampa, Florida, and Victory Brewing's Wisdom Hour, Wisdom's Hour, uh, Wisdom's, Wisdom's Hour, Hour Barrel Aged American Sour Ale, and I'm very excited to be tasting the Glenfiddich Experimental Series Zero One Single Malt Scotch today because this is the one that has been finished in IPA cask. Mm. We, we've actually both tried this before yeah. at the yeah, Houston Whiskey Social. And yes, we have. Terrific, but we haven't uh, had a chance to try it and talk about it. So, uh, so it's really good. Oh got to show you something. A friend of mine sent this, and you're going to love it. Hold on. Just what you got? Okay. So, he is now digging furiously into his bag. All I see is elbows and butts right now. Don't point okay. the camera over there. All right. All right. I'm going to show you something, and I'll show this to Facebook Live as well. This is a brand new creation, and my f good friend Dave Murphy sent me two of these. So you can come over to the house and we can both enjoy them. Is is that what I think this it is? This is a brand new whiskey glass that holds your cigar. Oh my gosh. That's exactly what that is. Can you see that on Facebook Live? That right there, you put your cigar in it. <laughs> so if you've ever been like out on the porch or whatever, <laughs> maybe you're at somebody's house or somewhere where it isn't ashtray friendly, but maybe you can ash in the flower bed or whatever. Uh, but you have no place That's to put your cigar down. Brilliant. And now you do. Well, because even a lot of ashtrays, you know, your cigar may be, you know, six inches long, and the little thing you got to balance it on is, uh, you know, right. an right. inch. Right, and it always wants to topple <laughs> to over, and then it's like stuff. sitting on the ash, and you worry, is that going to affect you the know, burn? Uh, so <laughs> people always laugh when they see me. Uh, if I'm at a bar drinking out of a, a bottle, yes, I will a lot of times, because I smoke generally slightly bigger cigars, a lot of times I'll just stuff the end into the top of the mm -hmm. bottle if I'm going to run off to the restroom or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> so then you have a bottle, it looks like a candle, a bottle well, with a cigar sticking out of the top I, of it. So I've tried a 44 ring gauge, very small, yeah, yeah. in this, and it holds it just fine, and then I tried about a 58 and it held that as well. Oh, so it, it's, man. it's actually fairly functional. I am green with envy. Yes, I knew you would be. So, uh, <laughs> so you got to come over now and we'll, <laughs> uh, see this we'll thing. enjoy it. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it'll blow your mind. It'll blow. So your this mind. is this is a glad. It, like when you look at it from a profile, <laughs> if you're not actually watching this, if you're just listening, mm -hmm. when you look at it from a profile, there's like a C cut out right. in that glass in the side of the glass. So it's like an indentation in the glass. 
so if you're looking at the outside of the glass, it's just this little place where you can mm. snuggle a cigar in there. That's awesome. <laughs> That's a nice feeling glass too, like a nice sturdy glass. Yes, yes. Oh, it's and and the other thing about it is it's actually fairly large, so you can put a lot of whiskey in. There. <laughs> so, uh, so you have been off the show for three weeks. Have you smoked anything interesting in your absence, Ian? I have smoked. Okay, so first off, I'm still working on all these cigars. You know, um, my last count we got back from the big smoke was 43 cigars. There's a lot of cigars. That's there. not including the cigars that we smoked while we were there. Right. So I'm still, like, what I end up with is uh, uh, information paralysis when I open my uh, humidor now. you've got too many things to choose <laughs> from. Yes, yes. It's like going to an internet jukebox, like, yeah, you know? Uh, yeah. Like, you just don't know what to the choose because it's all now? too much yeah. there. Right. So you play um, the same old playlist you made, like, <laughs> a year ago, right? Right. So I say, oh, heck, and I grab the same old, right? Um well, so uh, so anyway, I've been going through a few of those cigars. I really enjoyed a few. Uh, I had a, an Aurora last week that was just outstanding. But this week, I decided to do the uh, Placencia Reserva in 1898. Oh. Um, and it was a, a Robusto 4 and 3 quarter by 52 size. Um, a Nicaraguan wrapper, a Nicaraguan binder, hunter and filler. Um, and uh, at a retail value of close to seven dollars ish. Yeah, yeah. So this was a beautiful cigar. It had a, a chocolatey, um, chocolatey kind of wrapper to it, uh, with a little reddish hue, a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, it was a nice firm roll. Uh, I punched it. The the cap was really nice. Um, it wasn't a very thick cap like you get on a lot right, of them. It was a, right. it was a kind of a thin cap. The draw on it was fantastic. The burn on this thing was unbelievable. Uh, the initial flavor, I had no. I went into this completely blind. I had no idea what mm -hmm. I was uh, what you were about to really about get, to smoke. Yeah. I just chose one, and um, so anyway, uh, I started smoking. I thought it was going to be a full flavored cigar right off the bat because it had some big spice right off the front, like the kind of like smack your lips kind of. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's kind of big, and it settled into a very medium flavored cigar, which I liked. It had some complexity to it. It was nice. Uh, the the thing burned like from beginning to end, like. Perfect. There was no love runs. No, yeah, like it, it stayed almost perfectly happens. even the whole way. I burned it down to uh, burn my fingers. The overall <laughs> flavor profile is a lot of nuttiness to it, a lot of a uh, little bit of creaminess and um, some things like that. Traditional, um, traditional flavors, but it was it had it had leather. It had a lot of those those kind of things, mm -hmm. like those uh, those warmer flavors. Very that sort you of get. dark flavors. Yeah, the, dark. The that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. The dark flavors yeah. and and the, but the nuttiness stood out all the way through there, almost like pecan shell or walnut kind mm -hmm. of um, all the way through. And I really enjoyed it. It wasn't the biggest cigar, but it was it was really it was really it was nice overall. Medium. Yeah, good throw down cigar. At seven dollars, I'd say I give it definitely a five and a half to a six. Maybe it was, nice. it was a pretty good cigar. Very Bang nice. for the buck, it's what you'd expect for your price. Love it. Well, I decided to try to find out what all the fuss was about this week. All right, what are we and fussing so about? So I picked up one of the Monte by Monte Cristo AJ Fernandez cigars, the Corona. I want to so, I want to pause you for a moment. Yes, you can talk about this as soon as this is over. I just bought half a box of those. Oh, did you? <laughs> well, all right. So this is going to be very interesting. Go ahead. So, so I I got the Corona. Which is, uh, I think it's about five inches uh, with a 44, 45 ring gauge. Uh, and it was, I have to say, and, and I love A.J. Fernandez and, and his work. Um, so I was excited to see what he would do for mm -hmm. a classic brand like Monte Cristo. Um, this cigar was dark, like extremely box pressed. I mean, mm -hmm. it's almost like a square. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and just absolutely beautiful. Ecuadorian Habana wrapper and a Nicaraguan binder and filler. The pre light was as rich and earthy as anything that I've ever smoked. Uh, some leather and pepper. And then from the first puff, here's what surprised me. I was expecting a medium full. This thing was a powerhouse. I've seen it described as medium full, but I'm telling you, this was a total full bodied in my smoking experience. Uh, but that said, the strength did not overwhelm the taste like some full bodied smokes that I've had in the past. And so... Um, it was it was really quite good. Flavors of dark wood, white pepper, and overall creaminess that I wasn't mm -hmm. expecting, which may have been what kept the, it from being overpowering. Uh, a really great smoke. But here's one caveat. I had to put this down with about a third left because I had to take a phone call. I was on the phone for maybe half an hour. When I went to relight it, huge relight huge penalty. penalty. Mm -hmm. Huge relight penalty. Harshness, bitter... I tried, couldn't, could not finish the cigar. Uh, it's about a ten to eleven dollar cigar, 
at that price, uh, price to quality, I'd give it about a five. I mean, I think you get what you pay for with this baby. It's a good cigar. As long as you don't need to relight it. If you need to relight it, it's a three. So uh, five to five and a half, uh, though, I mean, it, again, and the relight thing could have been, you know, it could have been just a, maybe I was just away for too now, long. Some, some just don't relight well. Yeah, yeah. but uh, but anyway, it was worth it. I would say at least try one, and especially if your friend just got a box, then really try one. Yes. All right, it's Smoking and Toast, and we will be right back. Nine best cigar lounges in the world coming up. <laughs> Well, I don't remember eight months back, I actually. You, you said you did the Robusto. It was different size, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you said almost the exact same things about it that I said, although I never had to relight it. Because I didn't really. The, it was the I thought I remembered that you had done it. And the creaminess. Yeah. The I thought I remembered you had done it, but yeah. I didn't remember what you said. Yeah, because I actually went by uh, <laughs> Casa de Monte Cristo and, and uh, smoked one on the way here. That's right. I remember yeah. that. I remember that now. Yeah. So, by yeah. the way, I'm looking at your uh, uh, you in the chair. If we can either scoot that camera down just a touch or bring Ian up a, a, just a touch, he's he's kind of in the bottom oh, third can, of the uh, you know I of the frame. I accidentally scooch yeah. myself down. Uh, I, I look earlier. a lot is taller that, than you, camera wise. Is that better? <laughs> that is better. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know which camera you're looking at on that. Uh, it's but. that one. <laughs> I think it's that one. Which one is on? Yeah, oh, that gotcha. one should be on. Yeah, that one's on you. But you were just kind of like your head was in the bottom third. <laughs> so. I, I um, kicked my leg back and I yeah. hit this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you go. <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> All right. You're uh, back. How's it feel, buddy? I feel like I'm starting over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh. going to put this uh, <laughs> up a little higher. And I just totally... I couldn't, I couldn't get this thing out of the, the of the little sleeve. So I had to pull the sleeve up, and then of course everything's all. <laughs> it's like it's all up. elbows and butts over here. <laughs> elbows and asshole. All right. First up is the white noise. The white noise. Adam, are you tasting today? Yeah. All right. Adam actually was the one that turned me on to the white noise the other night when we were out. Uh, Dude, that thing is delicious. Uh, yeah. I was really surprised how good it was. I've seen it all the time too. It just never. Uh, that's been out for a couple years now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so correct me because I said it's been out for about a month. Yeah. That's well. It's a seasonal, so it has yeah. been out for a month, but okay. it's actually been out before. Gotcha. All right, Shubert. All right. So you remember our uh, our directives here as we do the tasting. Yes. Oh. Um, well, yep. We're all good. <coughs> all right. I forget to do B and B in that segment too, because I got. So are we full? We're full even. audio in between, or are we? <laughs> yes. Yeah, it no, is. Unless, it I is unless wondering. we ask him to duck it. Yeah. Actually, no, that's fine. All right, ready for seg two? I don't have anything I'm hiding. <laughs> All right. I wish I had a cigar with me. We could put the cigar in this, and that could be the cover photo. <laughs> which, which reminds me, I forgot to bring your Christmas. Oh. I have it. Now. I don't know if you guys heard that or not, but that was Ian just saying, he forgot to bring my Christmas. I'm yeah. excited. I'm I very do. excited. I have. Welcome back to Smoking and Toasting. It's the program that is all about fine spirits, craft beer, and hand-rolled cigars. It's show number 73. Ian is back, and we are brought to you by one of my favorite establishments on the planet, B&B Butchers and Restaurant, 1814 Washington Ave in Houston, and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth, where we will soon be headed on a road trip. So we're just coordinating the dates now. So looking forward to that. that Ian, it's great, like great to have time. you back on the show, my man. It, it really is not the same. I'm doing it without you. I will say that. <laughs> it just really isn't. Uh, for one thing, there's a lot more for me to drink. Uh, right. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know, what was really interesting is that some of the people that I've had on the show are not as into... I mean, you and I have different sort of favorites within the spirit and beer, craft beer community, let's say, in terms mm -hmm. of, I like the IPAs, you love the, uh, uh, the maltiness, the maltiness and, yes. and uh, I'm, I, I have a tendency to really gravitate Gravitate towards rum and tequila. You're a uh, you're a whiskey guy, although you know I'm 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 following in your footsteps here. But anyway, we still are kind of in the same universe. Some of the guests are just much. I mean, you know, uh, Steve and Maria last week they really like light beer, 
you know? And I'm going, which of these is tolerable? And they're going, oh, this is my favorite. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, and, and, and by the way, I'm not knocking if you like light beer. I'm just saying it's good to have you back. I feel like you. I feel like we commune here, like we've got a common sort of uh, wavelength going on. This feels good to be back. <laughs> this is not getting too mushy, is it? Is it's getting too mushy. We're going to hug off, off camera. Yeah, yeah, off camera, we'll hug. <laughs> uh, so there's a lot to talk about, but uh, uh, but we want to mention, um, and, and we'll get to this a little bit later in the show, but I, I've just about had it with Anheuser-Busch. I really have. Like, they're, they're pissing me off now. This whole first was the whole dilly dilly campaign. Mm-hmm. Now they've they've put out tons of new dilly dilly commercials. They seem to have completely lost their way. Like I don't even know what they're even trying to say now with the commercials. And the king of beers is no longer the king of beers, my friend. The king of beers. The king has been toppled the off the mountain. The king has been toppled. In fact, it's not even in the top three. So we'll talk about that coming up. And uh, we also will uh, be tasting the uh, St. Arnold White Noise. And uh, during the break, Facebook Live heard this, but during the break you uh, you mentioned to me, and I didn't realize that this is actually a seasonal that's out every year. I had forgotten that. So, so it has been out for a month or so this year, but this has been out before. Yes, it's yes. a seasonal, and it started off as one of their uh, Bishop's Barrels, I think. Oh, did it really? Wow. Yes. Well, it's uh, it's going to be I think No, 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 not Bishop's, Bishop's <laughs> Barrel. One of their icons. One of their icons. Okay, yeah. yeah. See, they have so many specialty things, and uh, it's, it's really... By the way, if you have PBS, um, Samantha Brown, who I don't really care for as a host, but she did a nice job on this, Samantha Brown's... Best Places in the World, I think, is is what the show is called, Hmm. did an episode on Houston uh, recently, and I think is still airing. And if you happen to catch it, it opens in the St. Arnold Brewery. Nice. It's a a very cool... uh, I haven't seen that. I'll have to check that out. Very cool. Very cool thing to, uh, to check out. Plus, tequila companies. More of them selling out to the big boys, just like craft beer. May 31st is a day to put on your calendar. We'll tell you about that. And the nine best cigar lounges in the world... And this I want to hear. Ian, I got this from Puro Prestige, which is a website, puroprestige.com. And, of course, this is just their opinion, but, you know, you know what they say about opinions. Everybody has one. Here's their top nine, not necessarily in order. The Wellesley Cigar Terrace in London. I have seen, actually, a lot online about this place. It's supposed to be an absolutely fabulous place to go and smoke a cigar. So we must put this one on our road trip list. That road trip is going to be kind of weird. Yeah? Because that road gets weird. That road gets (laughs) weird. Yes, it does. Uh, There's the Tinska Bar and Books in Prague, Czechoslovakia. All right. Uh, and uh, Or Czech Republic, I think it's called now. Proud. Um, there's El Floridita in Havana. Road trip. Road trip. <laughs> uh, that's supposed to be now. El Floridita is, there's, there's two actually in Havana. El Floridita is the one that's a more traditional type cigar lounge. And then also in Havana, the Partagas Cigar Factory. There mm. is a lounge there. And I, I have not been there, but I've seen photos of the Partagas Cigar Factory uh, lounge in uh, Havana. And it's just exactly what you would expect. You know, sometimes it look like they've been there since 1921. Right. You know? Sometimes the setting can make all. <laughs> All of the difference. Yeah, yeah. well, know, and just, some of these, I think they're nice because of how opulent they are. Yeah. And then others, it's because of how, like, how real they are. And that that's what part of a cigar factory would be. I mean, you're in Cuba, you're in Havana, you're at the part of, you're sitting on this chair that's probably, you know, older than your grandfather. <laughs> and it just, it's just amazing. So, uh, uh, here's one actually that you and I have both been to, uh, Casa Fuente in Las Vegas. Yes. And that is a wonderful place. Now, Casa Fuente is small. It's, you know what? Um, but it's you wonderful. hear about it, yeah. and you don't realize it is very small. Yeah, and, it is a small place, but it's, but it's a wonderful. great little place. Yeah. It is. Oh, I have had some amazing sangria there, too. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you stories. Uh, the Havana Club at the Emirates at the Emirates Palace Hotel in Abu Dhabi made their list. So did, and here's uh, the other one that I've been to, uh, Club Macanudo in New York City. Right, you've talked about Club that before. Macanudo is it's, it's wonderful. Part of a cigar factory in Havana, I mentioned. The Liberty Bar in Dubai makes their list. Remember, this is in the world. Right, so, right. Uh, and then the last one is in Beijing. It's the Davidoff Lounge in the Ritz-Carlton in Beijing, they say, is one of the nine best cigar lounges nice. in the world. Now, I want to add a couple to the list that I feel just that I'm aware of. Uh, one that I've been to, one that I'm aware of. The Grand Havana Room in New York 
is wonderful. It is a, it's a private thing, so you have to know somebody, I think, that, that has a membership to get there. There's also one in L.A., and I believe it works the same way. I haven't been to the L.A. one. And then I haven't been here, but... Um, Nimish was uh, talking to us about Burn by Rocky Patel in mm-hmm. Naples, Florida. So I uh, went online and looked at some photos, and I was like, oh, man, we got to awesome. go. We got to go. So <laughs> anyway, but the, you can check out puroprestige.com. It's a really nice uh, cigar-oriented site, and that was their list of the top cigar lounges in the world. So. Well, I'm uh, actually planning a Florida trip this year. I got a friend of mine that moved out there and just got a house with a pool, so we're going to go abuse his hospitality at some <laughs> point. In what time. area of Florida is he in? Um, he is... Uh, I think St. Petersburg area. Oh, nice, nice. That'll be that'll be great. I could be wrong on that. He's probably going to text me in a minute. Tampa, and be like, no, Pe- you idiot. Well, uh, but um, uh, our uh, beer, one of our beers today is uh, the uh, Highlight IPA, which is from Cigar City Brewing, which is Tampa St. Pete. So nice. Uh, so that should be interesting. So yeah, I'm pretty excited about that. So we might have to like see what's around there then. Mm-hmm. Ah, there's that it's sound. Not our first beer, though. That'll be that'll As be the second one the that we taste. As you pour the St. Arnold White Noise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The St. Arnold White Noise is a wonderful uh, color. Uh, it looks absolutely beautiful. Light, pale straw <laughs> color. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, a very, I would say, almost. Actually, I would say most of what we uh, of what we taste is not quite this light, except for during the light beer show in color. Right. In color, it is a very pale straw. This is a wit beer, though, and wit beers are historically uh, that's that more uh, traditional German uh, brewing style. They historically are a lighter color, but taking the first right on the nose, you right away pick up that it's that German uh, uh, wit beer sort of uh, sort of beer. It's got that. That little bit of spice and pepper that hits your nose right away when you first. Uh, mm. So the spice that I pick up right off the top of that. Yeah. What is that? Coriander. coriander. Is it? Is it really? Yes. I, I, that was a total it's guess. Exactly, I just, no, it's exactly. What I it just is. picked a spice out of my brain and said it. I might. I might just as easily have <laughs> no, said you nutmeg. It. So. No. So is to that me, coriander. Yeah. There's there's a lot about this beer that's that's interesting to me because mm-hmm. it's a style of beer that I generally like. Um, but what's interesting about this particular one is it's not really a me beer, I think. The coriander, yeah. I, I'm not a big fan of coriander and beer overall. Mm-hmm. I, I, in my mind, it takes over a little bit, and that beer to me has so much coriander and banana flavor So when yes. I'm tasting it. Well, Adam and I were out uh, with some family uh, at the... Um, Oh, I don't even remember the name of the restaurant now. It was down near the Scout Bar, down near Clear Lake, because we went down to see King's X play. So we go over. We're picking up some um, uh, some food, and we uh, they had this on tap, and Adam ordered it. And I was like, how is that white noise? He's like, oh, he loved it. So he said, uh, do you want to try some? And I tried it. And like in that setting, out of the tap, I was like, that's delicious. We have <laughs> that to have that spot. on the show. Yeah, it really did. Tasting it now, I, I understand what you're saying about the coriander yeah. because it's not my favorite. This is not my favorite beer style, but it is really good for a change up, and I, I actually really enjoy. Well, this. Well, what's amazing to me is like, I, I, I guess it's just a coriander thing because when I put it to my nose and and smell it, like <laughs> I just smell coriander. Coriander, and it's true with almost any beer that I have that mm-hmm. has coriander in it to me. And so that's probably more of a me thing than this beer being. You know, it's just it's just maybe not a me. Beer. I will say I like the way this tastes a lot better than I like the way it smells. It's got a lot of good things going for it. The mouth feels real good. Mm, the carbonation wonderful. is right on. And when you uh, the the finish is nice and clean, and you don't get that sort of lingering coriander no, at all, and it, and it leaves you with a sweet banana, almost mm-hmm. a light fruity banana thing going on yes just, there's definitely banana the there. coriander always gets in the way for me though banana or or maybe plantain my wife's yeah, been cooking maybe. a lot with plantain so i'm getting used <laughs> to like plantains good stuff um mm. uh white noise is as you said a seasonal so does it normally come out uh this this time of the year uh, uh, I think this is. I think this is when they put it out. I remember it last year. So yeah, I don't I'm think assuming. it came out before Christmas. Because I tried it. I tried it last year as well. And you know, I'll try things at least once a year and see if I still like it or still don't like it. Well, um, I can tell you. But I find I find almost anything with coriander, and it just to me uh, the coriander kind of takes over, and that's just a me thing. Well, St. Arnold is uh, Texas' oldest craft brewery, as uh, Brock from St. Arnold explained to the host of the show uh, that I mentioned earlier. They're the oldest, not because they were the first, but they're the oldest surviving craft brewery. Surviving, right. uh, In Texas, and uh, they just really do make great beer. You know, and I like enough of their other uh, beers, I think, to make up for the fact that there's this one that I don't really go by. 
Well, you know, I, I certainly try to make it up with the amount of Christmas ale and the amount, and the amount of uh, their stout, oh, dude, which the, is so good. I, our They're, car IPA is just on my all-time <laughs> fave yeah, list. You know, I, I love almost every seasonal ale. <laughs> yeah, have. Like, yeah, those are my favorite. And Arles. we've had we've had some of those yeah. uh, bishops barrels that yes. you uh, have been kind enough to bring in that have just just absolutely been terrific. So, all right. Well, uh, I would say I would recommend it to anybody to try. And if you like this style of beer, it's it's among the better of these this style of beer uh, that that yeah, I yeah that have. coriander spice is yeah. right up front on it, and it's not skunky by the way. A lot of times when you try the wit beer, it can be really kind of like harshly skunky, not mm. at all like that. So, uh, so I do so I do like it. All right, more beer to taste. The Highline IPA coming up. We'll also be tasting some whiskey and the Rob reports five cigars that are pure pleasure coming up. You doing the highlight next? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you put them down in order. Sometimes we do it in order. Sometimes I, sometimes. I try to put them in the order that I think we'll do them, and and then occasionally we'll change it up. Gotcha. But sometimes a lot of it depends on what. Like if I'm bringing the beers, I can kind of like scope them out and go, yeah, I think this order. But sometimes if you're bringing them out, I'm not sure what the different ones are like. So it just depends. <laughs> I'm just going to drink everything from now on out of my red solo cup. <laughs> I love it. We're going to try idea. and get Solo Cup to sponsor to our show. Sponsor, well, they we'll start be. reaching out. Red Solo Cup. All and right. if they don't, that's fine. I'm coming after you, Chanette. Did the lights just go up? Yeah. Uh-huh. I thought so. That helps me see better. Ah, oh, very nice. Is it a little dark on the first time through? Right now? Was it a little dark. dark in here? Well, um, it did look pretty dim. I think they usually turned up. Yeah, I think I seem to remember it not better. being quite that dark in here. Yeah, yeah. It's it's this is better. That's probably why you wanted to hug me earlier. We had this yes. mood going on. We had the mood going on. We had the music playing. It was uh, you know, it was, it was a moment. I don't mind the hugs. I'm secure yes. with it. Yeah, that's good. Good to know. <laughs> Good to know, my friend. All right, ready when you are, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah, welcome back, my good friends, to Smoking and Toasting. We are brought to you by... B&B, Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Avenue in Houston, and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. It, uh, I, I'm ready to go back over to B&B, uh, pick up some dinner and, uh, and appetizers. What do you say? Mm. You know you can get the bacon to go. You can actually buy can the bacon. To go? Yeah, they have a, well, they have a little butcher shop. You so have to prepare it yourself. Well, they have it with the directions, and but they have the, the <laughs> they have it with the uh, with the whole package, where the whole kit, where you have everything you need to make it like they have it at the restaurant. Yeah, I'm sure I can make it like they make it at the restaurant. <laughs> right? You know, I'm terrible with directions. You know, uh, one of my favorite parts of of having bacon at B and B is what's that? When I'm having bacon at B and B, Jeremiah runs up and goes, "Here, try this." Yes. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> usually some kind of whiskey or yes, wonderful oh, thing. That is a wonderful <laughs> thing, isn't it? <laughs> Shout out to Jeremiah. We got to get him back on the. I show miss soon. that guy. We haven't seen him in months. Yeah. I actually was trying to have him on the show uh, while you were gone. We just couldn't get, couldn't get it scheduled. Oh, so uh, so you will get to you will get to enjoy the man soon because we'll there have we him on the show. All right, uh, what's going on here? Oh, so all right, things are happening in the craft beer and craft spirits world. We've been talking about this for quite some time on the beer side, particularly where the big boys are buying up so many of the small uh, craft breweries. But what is interesting that's happening in the craft beer world is that underneath that. You know, the big boys have a tendency to buy the craft breweries that they think they can really do something with, you know, nationwide and worldwide. What's happening, though, as they're doing that, all these other even smaller craft breweries are cropping up that just have like a, a, a you know, a, a brew house or a pub room. Yeah, just uh, local. And, and, and they're just very local and they're just making all these amazing and experimental types of beers. And so uh, we're just seeing 
a continued growth in the craft beer area, despite the fact that some of the bigger, quote-unquote, craft beers have been pulled out and don't count as craft anymore because they're Mm -hmm. owned by the big guys, and yet we're still seeing growth in the craft area. Well, it's beginning to happen in the spirits world uh, as well. Two major tequilas have been acquired. The big boys are buying up the small boys. Avion Tequila has been purchased by uh, liquor mega company Pernod Ricard. And we don't know the exact deals of the sale, but it was over $100 million. Wow. Yeah. And then here's the big one. Bacardi has bought Patron. Wow. $5.1 billion for Patron. Wow. (laughs) And that just went down. So it's crazy. What I mean, it's like uh, you wonder now: is this going to start happening in the craft spirits world? But what's interesting is, while this is happening, you've got so many of the really again small guys. I think of our buddy uh, uh, Ian at Grateful Dane yeah. uh, with his, uh, w- you know, with his amazing uh, Texas rum, and you think about some of these really super small batch whiskeys that uh, that these little micro distilleries are popping up all over the place. And I don't know; it's a pretty rum. Same thing, rum. It's it's getting interesting out there. I love the variety. Speaking of the. Uh, from- of Ian over at Great Dane, like I, uh, I had uh, I took home after he was on the show last time. I took home that spiced rum, and it's funny. It's like the only safe rum around my wife because she doesn't like it because it's not traditional. Right, it's a very unusual kind of. Spice and she rum. loves rum, and I like it. Yeah. because it's not traditional. Right, because you're not a you traditional know? rum so kind it's, of It's guy a very in interesting thing. No, no, really. But but again, that's what's so great about these small guys. Like Grateful Dane's a perfect example of this. He'll be experimental because yes. he can. He's yes. a small guy. He doesn't have gazillions of dollars at stake. Yeah, if one batch he tries is not something thousands not, of right, barrels. Exactly. Right. So if he tries something and it doesn't work it's not like you know the end of the line so know? my next question with the bacardi uh acquisition the mm-hmm. uh, padron acquisition is are they going to keep padron as their as the padron line yes. or are they going yes. to change something no, about the, it or the they... word is that it'll continue to operate as it has operated and that it will be uh you know still the packaging everything will be right the same but but they will just uh they will just own it now and so it's very interesting because if you think about bacardi i'm pretty sure Sure is the best-selling line of rum. Yeah, uh, best-selling, and then you've got the. I think what I, I don't know. I'm going to have to check my sources on this, but I believe Patron has overtaken Cuervo as the number one selling wow. tequila. So that's a powerhouse of a company. It's not little and and crafty anymore. What's really interesting though is that the past year has seen Patron. Working on, I mean, they've got their Patron Silver, which everybody loves, mm-hmm. and and they've had the uh, the Añejo out there for a while, but they've been working on these really small batch, very expensive, uh, sort of super ultra premium. Uh, Patrons across the past year. Now, even Bacardi has done that because if you remember the show we did with Nimish, uh, yes. we brought out uh, a Bacardi that was retailing at a hundred dollars, and that was spectacular, was too. outstanding, it was so wrong. good. It was right. so good, oh, and it, it was so intriguing because of, you know you think Bacardi, you don't think hundred dollar rum, but man, well on the beer side. A couple of things, Henry. First, I just got to get this out, like off my chest. This whole dilly dilly campaign with Bud Light, where in the first commercial, which is the most famous one, where they basically make fun of the guy who likes craft beer and 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 you know send him off to the pit of misery, right? Well, if it's interesting or your ideas are different from anybody else's, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, you must go to the pit of misery. I mean, it's like really this is your message. But I, I just find it interesting that the company that keeps trying to buy. All of these craft breweries, like your Carbox and these guys, it is actually making fun of them on their flagship product. I believe that's called, hmm, what's the word? Irony. Irony. Is that what it is, or is yeah. it just like weird ass coincidence? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but here's the other thing now there's so many, they, so they discovered that apparently that commercial caught on, right? And people started saying dilly dilly because mm-hmm. you started seeing that showing up in some of their advertising. So now they've done all these different commercials and in all the new different commercials they're doing with the dilly dilly folks in them they're kind of making the king the guy that sends the craft beer lover away to the pit of misery they're kind of making the king out to be an idiot like he's kind of a bumbling moron in the new commercials so well so you're gonna maybe you're gonna follow why. what he says or uh, <laughs> well, it's it's an interesting time at at, at anheuser-busch because budweiser has been officially dethroned as the 
king of beers. It is no longer the top-selling beer in the United States. According to Beer Magazine's Insights, uh, people are drinking less beer than they were before and switching to craft brews as well as wine and spirits. And now Miller Lite has supplanted Budweiser. Budweiser had already dropped to the number three spot. And it has now been replaced by Miller Lite. Number two is Coors Light, and number one is Bud Light. So Anheuser-Busch is still holding the top spot. Right. But it's Bud Light number one, Coors Light number two, and Miller Lite number three. And Budweiser does not make the top. In 2001, Bud Light took over the top spot from Budweiser. And the main I remember that being pretty beer, big news when I yeah, had has been Yeah, has been slipping uh, ever, ever since. So... Uh, very, very interesting. When you subtract exports, by the way, Miller Lite sold more beer in the U.S. than Bud, but Bud's global reach mm. uh, keeps it uh, keeps uh, Bud Bud Light at the top. Overall beer trends uh, for 2017 suggest people are drinking less beer. Uh, top seller Bud Light shipped two million fewer barrels in 2017, while Budweiser shipments fell by 975 thousand barrels. However, people are spending more for beer. Sales rose 1.2 percent to 34.4 billion. So that has a lot to do with people going for craft beer, which right. in general is going to uh, retail at a little bit higher. A little price. bit higher, yeah, yeah, a little bit higher price. So that's uh, ah, that sound. That's a wonderful sound, isn't it? Um, I'm going to be really honest with you. In I, I've since uh, I bought this. I've I've actually seen uh, some write ups. In fact, it made someone's uh, top top ten beer list that I was looking at on the uh, on the uh, internet. Uh, but the reason I brought it I bought it originally is because I was in Specs and I look I saw it on the shelf and I was like <laughs> Cigar, Cigar City, City Brewery. Brewery. I have to try that. <laughs> if it's Day of the Dead or cigars, I'm going there. You got it. Uh, but it's High Lai uh, IPA and Cigar City Brewing. Cigar City is a nickname for Tampa. Yep, uh, which is where a lot of the old cigar factories in uh, Florida uh, used to be. There's not that many left anymore. It says on the can here, the merry game of High Life provides inspiration for this citrus-forward India Pale Ale with notes of clementine, orange peel, and caramel malt, creating an IPA that's bold and approachable. And I think I saw the alcohol content seven point five. So, uh, well, so this should this should bear. Trying. That's right in the range that I like. <laughs> <laughs> Say, this this might be your kind of a your kind of an IPA, and so it'll be uh, be very interesting uh, to see what the tasting notes on the nose. You definitely pick up the the citra hops. I right. think is what I'm getting. It's it's there, it's not just that it's citrusy like some of the citrus forward IPAs, but it's that more hoppy citrus like l- l- for when they're using citra hops. I think uh, it's a very bright, mm-hmm. almost grapefruity kind of, not quite grapefruit, maybe orange. Yes, but I'll say this: it is well. They say clementine on the on the can, and that mm. might be right. Uh, it is hop forward though. Uh, I I get hops hops in the front, and I get uh, the fruit kind of on the finish, the clementine and the maybe a little bit of sour lemon kind of a a, a taste. There is a little there's a hop snap on the end of it. There is a little bitterness on the finish, yes. Which again, that's that's an acquired taste. Some people really love that in an IPA. I have a tendency to lean a little more towards the ones that finish a little cleaner, but a lot of times it's because I want to smoke a cigar. True you know, that. and and if you got that bitterness uh, on the finish, it sometimes isn't quite as good of a matchup. For I, I take that on a uh, beer by beer basis. Yeah. Some of them I like when they finish a little bitter and have that. I mean, you can't drink a Stone IPA. You know, I like a lot of the Stone stuff. You can't drink yes. those and say, "Hey, there's no bitterness on the finish." Oh no, there's definitely bitterness yeah, on the finish but with those. But there's a balance to that bitterness, and that makes and this has some of that balance uh, to I'm it. Showing the highlight right to the, uh, but to you the definitely get that citrus in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the citrus though kind of balances it, so it's not like there are some IPAs that I've had where that that bitter will just live. Like right, it really doesn't go away. The citrus kind of <laughs> helps balance it out. It's and, almost and a you sticky bitterness. Yes, yes, uh, <laughs> it almost is. And but but this, I will say the citrus in this makes it more refreshing than I kind of would expect it to be, given how hop forward it is. Well, it brightens up the bitterness of the mm-hmm. of the aftertaste, especially of the beer overall. And I definitely get the clementine that they are 
that they are mentioning in here. Yes, they say it's both bold and approachable. So that's what they were going for, is something mm-hmm. that was very hop forward, but that also had, you know. It, it is. It's big on the front. A, it hits your nose. It hits your palate right a, up front. Yeah, a bit of a session. I'm for it. All right, when we return for our next segment, we'll be tasting uh, the Glenfiddich Experimental Series Zero One, a single malt scotch finished in IPA casks. I don't think it was high lie, but, uh, but we'll see what we can find out. <laughs> You're listening to Smoking and Toasting. My uh, notes in here says it has one, two, three, four, five, six different kinds of hops. Wow. That's a lot. (coughs) Oh, yeah, that one's on here. What's that? You like it? Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I think it's delicious. Like I said, if I'm not going to have a cigar, then I enjoy this kind of idea. Right, something that's big and finishes big. Well, that's the whole trick, too. If something finishes malty, that's a more round and sweeter finish, and that's great with a cigar. If Mm -hmm. something finishes really big and bitter, you know, yeah. And as big a fan, like I mentioned Stone earlier, as big a fan as I am of that, I don't drink a lot of Stone beers with a lot of <laughs> cigars. Right, right. You know? and that's one of the reasons I don't buy Stone more than I do. I love yeah. their beers, but very often when I'm having a beer, I'm going to also uh, be having a cigar. So, so and that's when I, that's why I like the really. Uh, so this is where our tastes kind of kind of like uh, crisscross because that's where I want the really malty things because the malty things are great with a cigar. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, here give we go, me, kids. Give me a second here. <coughs> uh, hold on. You're getting a lot of shout out, team. They're glad you're back, my man. Awesome. <laughs> Ian can never leave again. <laughs> 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 Good. Yeah. I've got a contract here, by the way. We're, uh, we're going to keep. Him, yeah. <laughs> contract is we're going to keep him shackled in the basement in between shows during the week. We'll send down food and beer and whiskey. <coughs> there it is. Let me find this. Right. He's go uh, ahead. Pulling you ready? Here we go. Segment cuatro. Welcome back. Smoking and Toasting is brought to you by our friends at B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, I'm just really excited to, uh, to try out the new B&B in Fort Worth. So we are road tripping soon. I know I keep saying that, but it's just a matter of aligning the dates. It's going to happen. We'll let you know when. And if you're listening to us in the Fort Worth area, maybe you can come out and join us and say hello when we're at uh, uh, B&B. We're also working on, I don't want to say this because I want to jinx it, also working on something that could be very special for that show. Very special. Ooh. Something we've never done before on the program. So. Something we've never done. Yeah. Do, yeah. do I have to wear pants? <laughs> you uh, you might want to wear pants, yeah. Okay. For this one. For this one, you might want to wear pants. Is it, if it's normal, that kind of party. Normal show? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. That's why I like this table here. <laughs> the Rob Report. I, I remember a few years ago, I, I was working at a radio station. I talked to the Rob Report into sending me like a complimentary subscription for a year. Because uh, I told him, yeah, I'm on the radio. You know, I'll talk about your magazine, whatever. So, so I think I talked about them once. Um, but they uh, are, the Rob Report's this magazine that's basically it's for people who have huge amounts of money. So the articles are about things like what kind of yacht to buy, oh, and uh, and you know if you're buy, you know if you're investing in uh, if you're putting your money into an offshore bank account, here are the best places to do it. It's that kind of money, right? But right. it's it's really kind of builds itself as a as a fine life uh, sort of magazine. And most people who get it were people like me 
who have nowhere near the kind of money, but we like to look and, and fantasize and pretend that that we could buy a hundred thousand dollar <laughs> pair of cufflinks, you know that type that type of thing, right? So uh, so anyway, one of the things they do though is they review cigars and they do it from a very kind of elitist sort of like uh, money is no object kind of a kind of. It's not a bad magazine, by the way. I like it, but it's they're definitely a money is, is no it, object right, type, right. Of, type of magazine. So they recently released a list of they just they didn't say these are the best in the world. They just said five cigars that are pure pleasure. Nice. At number five, the My Father Garcia and Garcia. Oh, I'll go with this that. This is That's the one cigar. that, yeah, Jose Pepin Garcia and his son uh, Jaime blended this one together. And they both make great cigars yeah. on their own. So uh, they blended this one together. That sounds good. That was their number five. Number four was the Macanudo 2016 MAO. Now you might say, really, a Macanudo on their top five cigars that are pure pleasure from the Rob Report where money is no object? But this particular cigar, it's the 2016 MAO. If you see one of these, grab it. I will reimburse you because I really want to try it. It was rolled using some tobacco that was grown with seed that was discovered stored in a warehouse since the 1960s. Wow. So the seeds were from the 1960s, and apparently they produced this amazingly rich and different tobacco. Again, haven't tried it, so I don't know. But it didn't make the Rob Report list, so nice. that's that's a thing. Yeah, I haven't tried that one <clears throat> Number three, I think you're going to love this. Rocky Patel 20th Anniversary Maduro. Oh, those are uh, good. Perhaps Rocky's finest offering to date, they say. Those are, those are yeah. great cigars. Uh, number two, it was the Monte Cristo Politico Pepe Mendez, using the rare Politico, uh, uh, or Pil- Pilotico, I think is probably the right way to pronounce it, the Pilotico uh, tobacco leaf. Um, I have not tried that, but I'm now I'm curious and I want to. And at number one, they uh, they ranked the Padron 1926 Serie number ninety, the latest they say, and probably greatest from Padron. Wow! So so there you go. There's a. I mean, I hope you. <laughs> I hope you can. You find that I think on the Rob Reports website you can find that article if you're looking. But if if you are one of those people, and I know we have a lot of them listening to the show, where money is no object for you. Uh, then that's you know go go find some of the cigars I'll, on that. I'll list. throw this down. You mentioned the padrones on those high end <laughs> padrones, the twenty six mm-hmm. and the forty fifth anniversary. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's hard to find a cigar that's better than those. They really are, like, good, aren't they? And I'm not saying that it doesn't exist, but I will tell you that those are amazing. I will tell you this: they've almost ruined regular padrones for me. Yeah. I used to really love smoking just regular Padrones, and now I find that when I go and have one of the the inexpensive Padrones, like I just don't feel like I'm getting the complexity I want. Right. And I know it's because I'm comparing them uh, right, to those to their upper upper line, right? yeah, yeah, it's like, oh, man. So, But you're thinking, I'm having a Padron, you know? So it's like, it's, it's like that with Arturo Fuente. You can go and get... Uh, a, a Fuente cigar that's just got such wonderful complexity to it, and that's right. just really... But sometimes if you get one of their downline cigars, it's just kind of very straightforward and okay, you know? I still once in a while go back and revisit that Hemingway series. Um, oh, the Hemingways are wonderful. Which are wonderful. Yes, yeah, wonderful cigars. Light cigar, but complex. Wonderful cigars. Wonderful flavor. Yeah. Not light on the flavor, Hemingway, just light on The Hemingway body. short story? Are you kidding that's me? That's the one that started that me. Is, oh. Oh, what a great, great mini cigar. perfecto too! What, what a, a great, great size cigar! Yeah, uh, easy to light if you don't uh-huh. know what you're doing. <laughs> like you, you only got to light at one little point on the end. You have got me totally craving a cigar right now. <laughs> totally craving a cigar right now. Speaking of cravings, I have been wanting to review this uh, whiskey on the show for a long time, and just for one reason or another, uh, it hasn't happened. Well, it's happening today. When Ian and I were at uh, Chris and Yuante's, uh Houston Whiskey Social event last year, mm-hmm. do you remember what it was? Was it in the summer, the spring? Uh, it was last year. It was the summer. Yeah. Uh, we tried so many great whiskeys at that. It was just amazing. And you've got to go. If you're into whiskey at all, you've got to go. It was pretty it amazing. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but the one that I tried that I remember thinking about the most in the weeks after that was the Glenfiddich. Um, it's the Experimental Series number 01, single malt scotch whiskey finished in pale ale casks. And it says underneath here, zesty 
and hoppy. I just absolutely loved this. And maybe it's just maybe it's just my brain going, well, you love IPA, you like whiskey, why would it not be good? You know, I don't know. But I just it really, you know, um, so good about so this. So the interesting, because I've had this before, so I'm just going to go ahead and start mm-hmm. talking about it before right, you wait, even pour. Go ahead. Before, before you do that, though. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we were waiting for, so um, very nice. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about it before you're even pouring, because, mm-hmm. you know, whiskey, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what I found about it, it, you know, it's the IPA cast. It's, it's finished in the um, you know, pale ale barrels. And everything. What I find about this particular one is you don't really get that hoppy IPA thing, but it does offer no, a yeah, very well. unique finish. That you never expect coming from a classic single malt well, scotch. That's absolutely true. It doesn't. It doesn't taste like an IPA. If that's what you're no, expecting. no, not at it all. It doesn't at all. Does but, it pair well with an IPA? Actually, yeah, quite actually well. Real well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and whiskey and and Excuse and me. and beer can be can be wonderful pairings if they work, but they don't always. You know, whiskey and beer are, are not always an exact pairing. But this is wonderful with an IPA. And what I can tell you. Is that on the nose. I get malt the, forward. It malt, just, uh, banana, it. and yeah, spice yeah. on the nose, and it's just and it's not much different. Uh, once you take that first sip, mm. pretty amazing right off the bat. I will tell you also um, what can really work with this is uh, using some water in this. Yes, yeah, a little water in that brings out it opens more up of the that fruit flavors. A little more bit. of that, yeah, warm fruit flavors. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as a matter of oh, fact. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> a little water. <laughs> a little water, thank you. Yep. Uh, so um, it opens yeah. up a lot of those fruit flavors, and it brings out, like, I get a lot more of the banana in there, but yes. also there's that, 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 there's that, I guess it's from the cask, there's that, that woody. That oaky kind of finish to it that just has a little something extra that you're yeah, not that's expecting. True. It's so with, good. With a touch of water, this is even better. It smells opinion. different, too. Yes, yes. And it, it just opens up a lot of those flavors. The flor- not floral. It's really the fruit. It's really the banana that I, kind of like surges forward a little mm-hmm. bit and just balances everything out. What's this really is not banana this- like banana flavored gum, by the way. We're no, 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 like no. Real delicious. We're talking about like rich. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh. Yeah, it, it it works with the uh, with the deep. This is a very rich tasting mm-hmm. um, whiskey to me. It's it makes me think of mahogany lined. Uh, uh, what is that? What is that line from uh, Anchorman? Uh, <laughs> I, I have many leather bound <laughs> books, <laughs> books <laughs> and my and my home smells of mahogany. <laughs> uh, but it's 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 got that kind of a vibe to it, though. It really does. Well, what's interesting too is you look at the color of it too. It's a very it's a pale straw. Mm-hmm. Now you don't get this from the bottle because it's a dark yeah, bottle. But I can or show maybe it's a dark straw, right not here. pale straw, but yeah. uh, it's a dark straw, and it's also quite oily. Like it's got legs. Right. If you spin it in a glass, it's yeah. got legs. No, you can see no question. In a red solo cup, but. and that's that's already with a little splash of water in it too. Yes. So um, I, this is one of my favorites. I will admit, you know, even even before coming in to do the tasting, but I just think it's so rich, and it's really only about. Forty-eight dollar bottle. This is not a super expensive, but I feel like it drinks more like a seventy, eighty dollar bottle. In my opinion, I'm actually uh, I didn't know the out. I didn't know the price point on it. I'm actually mm-hmm. a little surprised because you were expecting it would be more, didn't weren't you? Yeah, I mean that's a lot of bang for your buck if you yeah, ask me. It that, really is. It really that is. goes on the a, price just under versus quality index. I think a lot that higher. it is just under fifty. I'll double check that during the break and make sure that's right. But uh, I think it's just under fifty is what I paid yeah. for this. So that's going to be one of my uh, that bottle right there is going to be one of my. It it always remains on the shelf as long as they have it. That seems there's yeah that seems to make there's sense a few to me. bottles to me that are just that like the 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 La Santa for Glen Morin. Yes, that's. Great. Well, yeah, that's an amazing one. Um, this one's going to follow that up. Uh, there's, you know, there's a Bal- uh, Balvini that I'm I'm pretty uh, fond of that we had in our last uh, tasting. I'm trying to remember now off the top of my head which one it is. Uh, but that's the double wood. Yes, the double wood. Yes, Thank you. That that's, is that is see, that's, that's another one. Fantastic. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. That's fantastic. Okay, so uh, getting a little whiskey crazy here. Chris Hart's out there going. I know, guys. I know <laughs> that's obvious. Uh, but uh, but that's okay. You can come on the show and talk whiskey with us anytime, Chris. By the way, Chris uh, working on a show of his own, and I promised him we would uh, keep. Our 
our listeners. Uh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. Kind of different show than this one, but one that certainly will deal with uh, deal with whiskey. So we'll we'll let you know when it comes up. That'll be something to to enjoy and listen to once it's launched. All right, coming up in the next segment, I'm going to tell you why you want to mark May 31st on your calendar because it is going to be a very important day. Plus, lift the app where you can get a ride like Uber, Lyft, L-Y-F-T, coming out with their own beer. We'll tell nice. you all about it coming up next. It is Smoking and Toasting, and we will be right back. <coughs> I know I ran a little long on some of those segments. so I'm sure we'll survive that, sir. But did that end the IPA? Oh. Take a step back on that it, dude, it is like, whoa. Flavor is ridiculous. Yeah, so that's you go whiskey first so and good. IPA? Yeah, take a little sip of whiskey and then follow the IPA. Oh, yeah, it goes great with IPA. It's amazing. Oh, and even yeah. the big bitter IPA, both of them stand <laughs> right, up. They, they, I was going to say, this has got enough to it, this IPA, dude, that, is really that, it, uh, that it totally stands on the top. All right. I don't know how I'm going <clears> to... <throat> Remind me, Adam, at the end of the show to text you that picture oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. of the bottles. And then we'll get a picture of y'all two together, too. Okay, good. The reunion. The reunion. Yeah. Ian's back. That guy. Guess who's yeah. back. Back again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ian's you went, back. You went there with it. Nice. Tell a friend. <laughs> Guess who's back. Guess who's What's back. What's the beginning of that Guess song? Is trailer yeah. Park Girls going around the outside. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know why it cracks me up so much. Trailer Park Girls. It. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, kids. It's uh, segment numero cuatro. Cinco. Cinco. Thank you. Cuatro was the last segment. Well, there's okay. a... Uh, there's a hilarious <laughs> interview with Dr. Dre, and he's like, hadn't met uh, Eminem yet. He yeah. just heard the heard the uh, demos. Yeah. And he goes, and he walked in, and uh, he goes, and I'm looking at him like, uh oh, <laughs> this is the guy. <laughs> like, totally unexpected. If you haven't seen it, by the way, that Apple uh, documentary on uh, Dre and Jimmy Iovine. Oh, it's wonderful. I'll have to check that out. It's, it's really wonderful. Cool. It's a four-part documentary, and it's just wonderful. Yeah, when you watch the first episode, I can't <laughs> Yeah, you're totally, <laughs> totally hooked on it. All right, yeah. segment number five. Here we go. On the beach in Hawaii. Welcome back. It's Smoking and Toasting, and we are doing segment number five of show number 73. Ian's back, ladies and gentlemen. Ian's here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I never know which. I'm the world's worst sound effect uh, person ever because I never get them. I never get the right one. I'm always, always hitting the wrong button. Ian's back, and then I go. Yeah, that wasn't what I intended. So uh, anyway, Ian's back, and I'm excited, and I think I think the uh, I think the Facebook Live sphere, yeah, they're or whatever you here. call it, I think they're giving you some major props for being back in. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, pretty, yeah, I'm putting out a, a good thing. Hey, what's up, everybody? <laughs> That's very good. That's very good. I have a friend of mine. I had a lot of Facebook hits uh, in the last couple of days. A friend of mine dug up an old picture of me and him. Like, we were, oh yeah, I think we were maybe twenty, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Uh, we were obviously 21 because he has a beer in his hand. Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously. <laughs> of course you were. Yeah, Talking you would, about you, Larry. You would have to have been. Uh, by the way, our show was brought to you by uh, B&B Butchers and Restaurant at 1814 Washington Ave in Houston and in the shops at Clear Fork in Fort Worth. Now, during the break, for those of you who are not with us on Facebook Live, uh, Adam, who's on the Wheels of Steel here uh, producing the show, um, pointed out to me that the uh, whiskey the India Pale Ale cask, uh, Glenfiddich that we just had, and the Hialai India Pale Ale that we mm -hmm. had in the previous segment, that they go together beautifully. So, I trust Adam. He's never steered me wrong. I tried it. Amazing. Yes. Wow. Yes. Just, just amazing. I mean, you, uh, the Hialai is is just 
just hop forward enough to really stand up to the whiskey and and really blend with it perfectly. Uh, but I don't know if it's because of the IPA cask connection or if it's just this is a really great whiskey that goes with a, a really good beer. But you know, sometimes you run into those pairings. I was at uh, a friend of mine's bar. Uh a while back, and he has the Two Hearted Ale on tap, which mm-hmm. is what I was drinking, mm-hmm. uh, which is uh, Bell's IPA, which is yes, outstanding, outstanding IPA. beer. And I noticed that they had two bottles of uh, two bottles of Basil Hayden on the wall, and I was like, "Do you just go through that much?" He goes, "No, one of them's a rye." I said, "I didn't even know they had a rye." Yeah. So he pours me a uh, he pours me a, a little uh, shot glass of the rye, and I take a sip of that with the two hearted ale. Mm-hmm. Amazing! Just the just way they went two together, yeah. together, unbelievable. And it just happened basil hayden rye, two hearted ale, and just happened to be the coincidence of you trying. Oh yeah, I've had it. Like when I go up there, that's that's kind of one of my things now. Well, mark May thirty first on your calendar, and let's all celebrate it together because uh, Cigar Rights of America. Trey Boring was on the show a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago from CRA, and Cigar Rights of Europe, CRE. Both of them have corresponding websites. Um, they have gotten together to proclaim May thirty first, twenty eighteen, as the first international Enjoy a Cigar Day. I love it. On this day, both of the consumer organizations want to draw attention to the following. And we'll review this in May. But let me, let me bring it to your attention now. Here's what they want you to know, in addition to enjoying a cigar on May 31st. That the cigar is a luxury product enjoyed by discerning adults as an indulgence, not a habit. That each premium cigar is a natural product. That the enjoyment of cigars can contribute to one's personal well-being by offering moments of solace, contemplation, and fellowship. That premium cigars, I feel like we should have this dun, 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 playing underneath. That premium cigars versus other tobacco products such as cigarettes should not be treated the same way by law. Right. That patrons of cigars and producers and sellers of cigars contribute to their communities, support charities, and believe in the right to personal freedom. That thousands of jobs are maintained in agriculture, industry, and commerce, above all in countries that need support. That cigar patrons believe that they should have the option to enjoy a cigar where they are welcome. Private property owners, be it retail tobacconists or establishments in the hospitality sector, should have the liberty to set their own rules for the enjoyment of cigars not governmental bodies that have alternative agendas. And finally, that cigar culture should be assigned world heritage status. These are the goals of the organizations. I have a question. Yes. So there's a lot of anti cigars bad for your health, it's bad for this. First mm-hmm. off, it's my health, not yours, okay? Right. Thank you very much. Second off, um, are you suggesting that a cigar puts out more carcinogens than your car does in 10 minutes? Hello. Thank you. Oh, yeah. But you're not calling for people to stop driving, stop their, driving cars, their cars. That's right. Because you're still driving yours. That's right. You're still taking airplanes. Cigars are probably a little better than that for the environment. Yeah. Plus, a cigar, unlike the car, if you live in a city, you're picking up everybody's cigar emissions whether you drive one or not. Everybody's car emissions. Uh, I'm sorry, everybody's car yes. emissions. Thank you. But a cigar, generally speaking, unless you're sitting next to someone else who's smoking one and, you know, they're not kind enough to move or you're not smart enough to move, uh, what I'm saying is a cigar is something you choose to uh, to experience yourself. Yes. It's not something that, you know, people don't have to walk into cigar bars and cigar no, lounges not at and all. cigar stores. And I've had, experience so here's, here's funny, funny cigar experiences. I've had where I've gone and found a place where I'm not near anybody, mm-hmm. and I light a cigar and I enjoy it. Yes. This happened to me at the rodeo last year. It was kind of mm-hmm. funny. So I'm sitting out in this big outdoor area. There's nobody around me. Yes. I light up a cigar. I'm enjoying my cigar. A whole group of people come sit at the table next to me mm-hmm. and then get upset and give me dirty oh, looks because no. I'm smoking a cigar. Oh, no. That doesn't work for me. Which makes me laugh. Yes. <laughs> I will, if I don't find a big open place where there's no one else around, I will ask. Yes. Is it going to bother you if I smoke a cigar? And I've had people say, yes, it will. And I go, okay. And I go find another place. I have right. no problems with that. Right. Exactly. Like, I get it. A great cigar still smells like a cigar. However, you know... 
Don't go walking into right my cigar and then complaining about That's it. That's right. That's right. Yeah, if it, I'm I'm like you, I sometimes that lights me up a little bit. As I you sometimes can tell. won't even choose a place to sit down, or will choose not to light up if there's people around. I just I just feel like you know they're you know they're probably not going to want this, or I'll ask like you do. But man, if I have already lit the cigar and you come and you walk sit in my it? area. Yeah, that, I, that's, I don't care. That's your um, choice. Yeah, that's up that's to you. That's your issue. Victory Brewing Company is in Downingtown, Pennsylvania. I used to live a very, very short drive from the Victory Brewing Company. Now, you gave me the show notes They're uh, ahead of time and said that yeah. we were going to try this one on the show. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. pretty excited about yeah. this one. Uh, Victory uh, Brewing Company is a wonderful brewing company, but in all of the time that I lived uh, close to them, when I lived in, in Bryn Mawr, Pennsylvania, I never actually had a chance to try anything that they released in a bomber. Uh, the only, I, I tried their bottled beer, so many of them just fantastic. Uh, the Victory Hop Devil was the first, like, really super hoppy IPA that I began to enjoy uh, before I'd ever had any doubles or imperial uh-huh. you know, IPAs. And, uh, and they just make really, really wonderful beers. They are uh, one of the older craft breweries in the country, actually. They've been, uh, well, I don't, know, I don't know if that's true, but they were very early to the craft. They've been around for a long time. The craft time. scene, yeah. They got started back in the 90s. So they, uh, Their Golden Monkey yeah. is always good. Yeah. Now, see, I'm not a fan of the Golden Monkey. That's the one of theirs that I don't uh, like Oh, see, we, yeah. see, we're on see, the opposite yeah. end. Yeah, of that one. Right, yeah, I right. like their golden monkey a uh, lot. But we're about to, I'm actually pulling a cork out of this. We're about to try from their bomber uh, the Victory Brewing. Oh, nice. Uh, the Victory Brewing Wisdom's Hour. And I don't know if you uh, uh, can see the, t- uh, the, the font, the typeface on Wisdom's Hour, but it reminds me of that animated movie Cool World. Did you ever see Cool World? Oh man, I it had David about Bowie that songs years. in it, and right. it was a, yeah, uh, and it it was the same uh, the same exact font. So also like the uh, Bugs Bunny <coughs> Halloween special, yes, with the uh, big furry thing. What was it called? I forgot. Gossamer. It. The go- yes, yes, Gossamer. very very nice. And he um, said things like Abracapucus, yeah, Hocus Cadabra, <laughs> Hocus Cadabra, <laughs> and Walla Walla Washington. <laughs> You're good with that. I like that. I don't I like know why that. I know these. Things. Uh, so, Wisdom's Hour is a barrel aged American sour ale, and we don't do a lot of sours on the show. But if you're going to do one, let's do one for a company sour. like Victory Brewing. So, uh, it says, "Behold." The magical complexity that is Wisdom's Hour. This barrel-aged American sour features um, Breton, Bretonomyces. Bretonomyces. Am I saying that right? Mm-hmm. Bretonomyces aromas and tart plum flavors that merge beautifully with undertones of spice, oak, and chocolate. Kettle acidification and aging on a mix of French and American oak. Red wine barrels give this beer unique drying tannic finish and it is signed by the brewmaster so um uh, this is not an inexpensive beer i want to say it was a little over twenty dollars for the bottle so it's not a uh, it's not like a uh, an el cheapo bomber so i'm really interested in seeing if this stands up to its price and stands up to the quality level that we expect you from can smell Victory. the tart in this from a oh, mile away man, you really can like you really can. this will almost make you pucker Mm, mm. <laughs> yes, yes. Right now, I haven't, I haven't even tasted it all. I'm just smelling it. It'll make you and start is, drooling pretty mm, quickly. Mm, mm, mm. Um, this one's right up my alley too, at about nine and a half percent. Yes, and so what this makes me think of upon taking the first, uh, the first drink here is that Ian, this is very much like the barley wine style that you're such a fan of mm-hmm. combined with the uh, sour. more straight ahead sour it's yeah. like if you were able to take the two of them and mesh them just perfectly this is what you would get it's really quite good yeah it is a- adam's making a face <laughs> Uh, well, it's the sour not face, as, right? Not as big of yeah. a fan not of a the bad sour face it's a sour face yeah, yeah it's true. Uh, mm, mm. no it's tart and and I will say that this has just that little bit of sour finish, yes, which lets you know this was a uh, think uh, a definite sour dark ale. fruit and plum. Yeah, they do mention plum on the bottle, and you get yes. that. I'm also getting maybe cherries uh, and a, just a little all those bit of, dark tart mm-hmm. fruits. Yeah, that's. There's some pick that up, and there's some chocolate in there, like like baker's chocolate. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. The real kind of dry uh, sort of uh, well, that's really quite good. So um, 
I'm going to pronounce this price to quality worth it. That's that's just a really, really <laughs> a good special bottle. But, but you know, this is one to open up. You know, when you have a lot of friends over, uh, right. And you uh, you want to all try and sample something really, really good. That's so. This, this would be kind of like a special occasion uh, beer, and and it's really, really good. So, yeah. Well, close to ten percent. You don't want to drink all that by yourself. That's true. We didn't uh, have a chance to get to uh, this story, so we'll bring it uh, back on our next show. But Lyft, uh, the auto uh, uh, ride sharing service. Mm-hmm. Uh, is uh, releasing a beer, offering ride discounts, and they're available in bars in Chicago. Uh, we'll tell you all about that. And uh, plus, um, we just have a lot to talk about, man. There's so much going on in the industry. I'm so glad you're back, Ian. It was a pleasure to do the show with you again. And uh, I hope you have. We, we did run out of time on the Mumford and Sons IPA. Well, you know, we're, one of these days we're going to get we'll to that. We'll try to get to that uh, when we can. That bottle's getting old. Have a wonderful week, my friends. We love you all. And. Uh, Cheers. Cheers. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you, Facebook. Awesome. Thank you, Facebook.